Welcome to the RCSA. In this clip from August's Regenerative Landscapes webinar, Mark Charette talks us through South Africa's first net positive ecology project. So let me talk about Fumune, South Africa's first net positive ecology project. The first thing is to talk about when you're designing any kind of net zero project is to make sure you've got an integrated design process. So you're performance orientated. You're not just looking at the aesthetics of the landscaping. You're looking at how it performs. So you're setting those targets up front to your client. So net positive ecology is a performance target for the design, not just pretty plants that we can maintain. Understanding the local weather is, um, is pretty self-explanatory. And then making sure, the important thing on this landscape project is making sure that when we handed over the landscaping project that the team that was going to maintain it was trained to do that. A lot of these projects look wonderful in the first couple of years. And then, you know, after five years, everything's falling apart. So our appointment at the moment is to monitor biodiversity for the next five years now that we've um, implemented this landscaping project. But that training aspect was critically important. So what made this project special is it brought back Igoli granite grassland, which is a critically endangered um, vegetation type, the most endangered vegetation type in the city of Johannesburg. We planted over 137 different species, over 4,000 individual plants. And it's been quite a wonderful example of just what, what you can do with uh, you know, a relatively small budget, but a really committed professional team and client. This is the map that we've helped Sambi produce. We produced this map for all the five major cities across the country so that landscape architects and landscape designers know what vegetation type was originally there, what species list is linked to that, and how endangered each of those vegetation types are. So we can start to get excited living in a city and contributing to conservation in a small way. The site itself is 1,500 square meters that we actually regenerated, about 15% of the site, the site being about 10,000 square meters. This is the technical uh, ecology calculator that you fill out in order to prove that you are net positive ecology. You're looking at about a six point change between your, your site, you know, before you actually implemented the landscaping compared to um, after that. So you can see this is um, what we gained for, for our project itself. And then the project uh, site, the, the existing photos show the existing Kukuyu lawn um, in a winter and a summer condition. And obviously our approach was to remove that lawn being an exotic species and very difficult to get rid of, and then replant with locally indigenous species. We did keep a memory of the lawn, but also keep like the client vigilant in being able to maintain the landscape. You can't just let this kukuyu do whatever it wants. It will get in and, and start to, to, to take over. And then from a technical point of view, we researched the vegetation composition ratio of Igoli granite grassland. So the ratio between grass, herb, geophytes, small trees, tall shrubs, and try to match that as closely as possible to what we planted. So what's important about this is not just planting a, a grass that looks pretty or a whole bunch of different species. It's the relationship between these plant types. Every plant type between a grass and a herb has a different ecological function. And you want to try and match, match that, those relationships as, as close as possible. And the important one for this one is the relationship between grass and herb being kind of a two to one ratio. That's what we tried to do with what we planted. We planted a lot more geophytes than, than the percentage of existing equally granite grassland. And that's because most of the, the locally indigenous plants we could ethically source were geophytes. So people love the pretty flowers. And um, a lot of those are bulbs. This is just the same graph represented in a different way. So original, what we planted in terms of the amount of species. And then also monitoring that. So monitoring that in 2023, a year after the landscape had been planted, monitoring that this year, two years after the landscape has been planted, and making sure that these species are still surviving and this ratio is still kept as close as possible to the original. And then net zero ecology or net positive ecology, not just looking at plants, you know, how do we increase insect biodiversity? So these are the signage that um, illustrated the scent and smell plants of the, the landscape that we planted. The client is a, a scent and fragrance manufacturer. And then putting insect hotels behind that. So pieces of wood with some holes drilled in them at very specific sizes to attract very specific species to pollinate the landscape. And then the other kind of biodiversity metric or smart goal that we set for ourselves is to triple breeding bird diversity in five years. So it's one thing to bring birds back, which we've seen a kind of 10 to 20% increase in bird species that we've seen on site. But there's something different when you provide, again, the home for the bird. The bird actually chooses the landscape to breed. Some, you know, the most precious aspect of its lifespan, you know, bringing up kids. You know, we think what that means for us. 
So what we did is we took our current bird list, of what we'd seen on site, and we took what habitat requirements were needed for those birds on the, the left-hand side of, of the graph and, and provide as much of that in the short term as possible. So that's very simple things, putting up nesting locks, you know, putting up um, owl boxes. And then to look at the, the area list of bird species and seeing if we could provide those habitats within the grassland. So you can see bare ground, short grass, tall grass, short dense grass, important for the area uh, bird species. And that related directly into how we maintain the landscape. You have to have cut grassland once a year for it to stay healthy, that we're not just going to cut all the grass at the same time. We're going to choose specific areas to cut in the, in the early seasons, certain areas to cut in the late season, so that you've always got this relationship between short and tall grass. And we originally had it really, already designed a bare area in the middle. So trying to create as much habitat flexibility as possible between the different types of grasses. Thank you for watching this short clip on RCSA's Regenerative Landscapes webinar. Like and subscribe for more inspirational content.